Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about how to grow a window cleaning company, how to make it bigger, how to make it stronger. So if you have a company or you're thinking about getting into business or you don't even have a window cleaning company, but you have a service business in general, we're talking about the how to. You're going to love it. Stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's going on? All you squeegee slingers out there. By the way, I have the hiccups. This is my second time starting this uh, recording, so you may have a random hiccup still happening, and I apologize. But I'm not going to do another one. So uh, if it is your first time here, have a look around. Uh, Hopefully you find this show adequate. That's all I can hope for. Uh, But there's 230 plus so it's for you to um, catch up on. Go back, listen, anywhere podcasts are. And of course, it's always on YouTube also. So go back, watch, listen, learn, or just spend some time. Either way, that's super awesome. And if you are one of the cool kids, this is going to be a long episode. I'm sorry in advance. If you're one of the cool kids, and that means you have watched all the episodes, and more importantly... You buy your supplies through me, shameless plug. What's up? I hope that you have one of the Cool Kids stickers that are here behind me scattered around. We got like first gen stickers, second gen. We're going to be on third gen pretty soon. But if not, put your orders in through me. (gasps) Wow. You're going to order supplies anyway. Why not buy them through me, right? 862-312-2026 is my cell phone. Give me a call and I would love to put them in for you. So, another thing I talk about every single week is the American Window Cleaner Magazine. Have you gotten your subscription yet? You're listening right now, you're like, oh man, this guy will not shut up about these ads. But you haven't gotten a subscription yet, right? So go and get a subscription. If you have gotten a subscription, you're absolutely rad. And I appreciate that. But I know out of the, you know, three, 4,000 people that download this every week, some of you don't, don't have subscriptions, so go get one. It would mean the world to me, and uh, you're going to be awesome because you're going to get stickers, which you can put everywhere, take pictures of, join the culture of window cleaning, and get an awesome magazine. So go do that. It's awcmag.com forward slash sub, and get a subscription. Go do it. Do it. Do it right now when you come back finish listening to this. It's just filled with hiccups anyway, right? So today we are going to be actually talking about how to grow a window cleaning company. Wow. So growing a window cleaning company is in a lot of people's brains, okay? A lot of times when you talk to people, they say, oh yeah, yeah, no, it's my first year, but next year, man, I'm going to do twice the... The, the, the jobs, I'm going to gross twice the, the amount, I'm going to get twice the profit. I mean, we're going to double it next year. Sweet. How are you going to do that? Uh, just work hard and, you know, push, but just do it, you know? Just put, I guess, like a lot of stuff, man. I'm going to get more cost. Like, the big thing is, is you have to understand how you're going to get there. And a lot of times people say they're going to grow or they did grow, 90% of the time, probably probably actually more than 90% of the time, I would say, it's because people let it happen, but didn't control it happening. Now, there's passive and active in everything. Sales, in new jobs, in customers, and all that, right? There's always going to be a passive, and there's always going to be an active, right? Passive means it just ha- happens. Jeez. Uh, active means you went out and did it, Right? Growth can be passive or active. It can be both. And you need to have a passive growth just like you need to have active growth. You need both. You have to have both, right? But active growth is more controlled. It's more regulated by you. It's more healthy. All of those things are the ways that you make it happen. You own a company. You own a company. So it's your job to go and and make it 
better, bigger, stronger, healthier, whatever that looks like to you. And by, by the way, I told you already, <clears throat> this is the second time I'm recording this because I've had the hiccups and they're, uh, you're just going to deal with the hiccups. I'm sorry. Go back and watch any of the other 230 episodes. I do not have the hiccups dur during those, so I'm sorry. Uh, but in growth, there's a couple modes that you have to be in. Again, active and passive is the type of growth. You need to know which one you're working on because you can't work on an active. I mean, that's like marketing stuff. You can you can build it up, but you can't make things happen. But in active growth, you have to realize if you're in growth mode or you're not in growth mode. Now, that, that comes back to what you are as a company right now. You cannot, cannot be in growth mode all the time. You can't. Because things need to change, you need to revamp things and move things and do things and all of that. And if you're always actively hardcore growing, you'll burn yourself out. You can be in growth mode for a long time, but eventually there's going to be a period where you're like, okay, this year we're just, you know, we, we're not going to grow. We're going to strengthen this side or whatever, right? So you need to know first off if you're in a growth mode or not. And if you haven't been actively in growth mode, you just let it kind of happen. You're not in a growth mode if it's all passive. If it's all passive and non-active, it is a coasting mode. And that's cool. You can be in a coasting mode. You have to be every now and then. But if you're like, oh, yeah, you know, my business is growing, but I really want it to grow more, man. Next year is going to be huge. How? I don't know. It's just going to be. That's passive. That's like marketing mode, right? So understand if you're in growth mode or not. Both of them are important, and both of them are seasons you have to be in. Growth mode will always mean that you are putting all of your assets and resources into growing. You can't be in growth mode and not be just dumping everything you have into growing. That's still, you're not you're back to a coast mode, even though you're having slight growth and slight active growth. You, you're always going to be advertising. You're always going to be trying to get new jobs. Like, that's always going to happen, but it's the mode you're in. And as a side note, um, I, do, uh, I, I do coaching, and I don't talk about that a lot. I do private coaching. Um, and one of the things that I go over with everybody is uh, the moat. A lot of times when you're in coaching just in general, and it's like private one-on-one -on -one stuff, so everybody's in a different season. I totally understand that. But if somebody says, I want to grow, and you're in active growth mode, understand how hard active growth mode is. The percentage and amount that you pour into it is huge. It's huge. There are companies that I deal with personally that are putting 50% of profits into advertising. I know a company who right now is doing uh, almost 100% just into um, growth mode. And the reason is, now let me explain that. So you have net and you have gross, right? Gross is what the numbers everybody else cares about. I made a million dollars in the year. Nah, you made like, you know, profits of X amount, right? But if whatever the company is, you are actually using a percentage of that in your advertising. And it depends on what mode you're in to what that percentage is. But you're always going to be basing that off of your profits. X amount of profits go into the advertising, right? The more you put in, the more you advertise, the more people come in, the faster you grow. You have to understand that putting profits into marketing on a huge, uncomfortably huge level, that's growth mode. If you're just like, you know, every year I put 1% of profits into marketing, cool. That's cool, but that's not like a growth mode. Growth mode means I'm going to grow over profit this year. So understand what mode you're in. Neither of them are wrong, and you need both a non-growth period and a growth period. But if you're in a true growth period, you need to buckle up. It's going to be a interesting and semi-painful period because everything is going to growth <clears throat> what do i mean when everything's going to growth understand that when you grow 
you have to grow everything to make it a healthy side of growth, right? So it is all encompassing when you're in a growth mode. But how do you get there? A lot of times, like I said, people just I'm going to get there. Uh, last year, I grew 50%. What did you do different? Nah, just like word of mouth, you know, people, re- it's not growth mode. That's just business. Like that happens. You're not going to do 100% growth in year 10 by not actively doing anything. It's just not unless you really, really, really went slow to 10, right? But how are you going to do it? And the whole thing comes down to a really boring idea that if fun for some people, I like it. But really boring to a lot. And it's goals. Goals can be broken down. So here's the thing. Let me give you this really cheesy analogy. Uh, If you're going to take one piece away from this, this is it. But in, I'm going to drive to California. I'm here on the East Coast. I'm in North Carolina. I'm going to drive to California. I'm going to go to um, San Francisco. I'm going to go see the Golden Gate Bridge. Sweet. Nobody ever asks how you're going to get there. Because you're going to, punch it in the GPS and the GPS is going to give you a thousand turns, but step by step, how to get exactly there and the best, fastest way to get there. Right? No one ever says I'm going to the Golden Gate Bridge. Like, ah, are you using a GPS or are you going to map? Nope. Just driving. You're just going to drive. Like that seems like really unefficient way to get there. Now, if you want just the adventure and you want kind of it to take you there cool but no one does that if i want to get to a certain point and i have an exact destination i'm going to put it in a gps and it's going to tell me exactly how to get there a gps is just like goals right people go oh, man i want to make a million dollars five years i'll make a million how are you going to do that just work work hard and and, and do that i'm going to have more employees and how many employees do you need like five like five or five how much is each truck producing? How much is route? What's your what's your percentage to route to uh, commercial to residential? What aspects are you getting into? Right? There's so many pieces that come to that. Now, again, if I want to get to a million dollars, I can figure that out real easy. I can figure out how much I need to make every single day of the workable year to make a million dollars. I haven't done the the math. Let's 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 do this i'm gonna i'm gonna do the math real quick because why not and you following um (laughs) at home uh you know this may be rough there's 260 work days a year right 260 work days so if we take a million and divide that by 260 work days it's three thousand eight hundred and forty seven dollars a day three thousand eight hundred forty seven dollars a day every day you're working to make a million dollars. Now, when somebody's like, oh, I'm making a million dollars, are you doing $3,800 in work a day? If not, then you're not gonna get to a million dollars. Understand that math always works. So if you're planning to get somewhere, you have to then figure out how I'm getting that $3,800 a day to get to the million, right? Same thing with business. Goals make a clear path to where you're going, right? You have to do goals and you have to break them down. A lot of times when somebody says, I got a goal, it's a million dollars in five years. No, no, you have a destination, right? That's not a goal. That's a destination. The goals in planning to get there are the, okay, what do you do a day? What does that look like, right? If you do a day for $3,800, how many employees need to make that? How many employees, what are you doing? $750 $750 per two employees, $1,000 per two employees. So that means you need to have four crews running to make a million dollars. What does that look like, right? How do you get to four crews? How many jobs is that? Your average ticket? Maybe 300 bucks. Maybe it's 380 because I'm bad at math. Your average ticket, $380. That means you need to do 10 $380 jobs every single day, like clockwork, all year, in order to make that. So that means that in winter or middle of summer, when things slow down, you may not be working as hard, so you have to work harder in other times. So now maybe instead of 10 jobs in spring, you need to do 12 of those jobs a day. What does it look like? Break down your goal 
into smaller pieces. The biggest thing is, is that you can eat a cow, all of a cow, by doing it one bite at a time. It may take you a year, right? But you could do that. That's super morbid. You can swap cow out with anything you want. I know. Right? You could eat a watermelon. It may take you a while, but it's one bite at a time. You can't take the whole watermelon and shove it in your face. Kids be like, I'm going to eat a watermelon. Well, you already know by eating that, you're going to eat it one bite at a time. So you know what you need to do. But if you really want to figure out when it will happen, figure out how long it takes for every bite. Take the amount of the watermelon into account. Take in unforeseens. Okay, if it's going to take you an hour to eat a whole watermelon, do you got to go to the bathroom in there? Do you got to stop? Do you got to breathe? Drink some water? What are you doing? Right? It sounds so stupid, but a lot of times, most of the time, when people have goals that they throw out there, they don't have the how. They don't have the plan. They don't know how they're getting to that goal, and that is the killer of growth. You have to understand that there is support needed for the growth. Right? If you're going to run a million dollar company, you say, I'm going to make a million dollars. Okay. What's your profits on that? Oh man, I bet you it's this. Okay. So you're running three or sorry, four crews, each producing a thousand dollars a day. Each of those crews has to have a truck. They have to be insured. They have to all have gear, all have shirts, all have all that, right? You're like, yeah, of course. Okay. So what are you paying on all that stuff? What are you paying on all that? Well, when I, and I was not necessarily the same as you, this is a while ago. I knew that every day that I was open, just in costs, it was $138 or $183 or something. This is years ago. $138 or $183 a day. Every day of the workable calendar went to costs of having what I had. Building trucks, insurance coverage, you know, workers, all that stuff. So that means when you were rained out that day, you lost $183. That's what that looks like. But now with growth comes support staff. If you have four crews, you're not more than likely going to be the guy who is doing the office stuff for the whole thing. You're going to have an office staff. Because four people running 10 jobs a day. 10 jobs a day. Remember, 200 and what? What did we say? 260 days out of the year? That's 2,600 jobs. 2,600 jobs. You have to do that year. That means $2,600, 2,600 jobs you have to book. 2,600 jobs that cannot not schedule again. Because if you lose somebody, you got to pick somebody else up. That increases it. You're talking about having to potentially get 3,000 customers to book that year. You need support staff. You need people on the phones making schedules, booking things, getting all that done. You need people out there doing upsells. You need people getting new customers. So you're in growth mode. You're, you're, you're advertising and doing marketing. You're doing all that. You need support staff. So now your four crews, each doing $1,000 to make to the million, now has at least one or two support staff. And you. So now each crew has... Uh, two people, that's eight, nine, 10, 11. You have 11 people on staff to make a million dollars. What is it starting to look like, right? What is it starting to look like? Well, now all of a sudden you got four trucks on the road every day. They're in so tight that they cannot take a day off. Now you have a mobile mechanic. You need to have somebody who's on call for any type of issues. After hours, they're going to take care of it, right? Right? All of those little costs start adding up. This is where we're looking at how we're going to get there. When it all comes said and done with support staff and everything else, if I could produce four crews running $1,000 a crew every single day of the year, that's enough for me to do all of that, and then I'll profit $20,000, putting it out there. Well, on a million dollars, you thought the profit might be a lot more. Remember, profits are after paying yourself. 
So understand that there's a lot more support that goes with that. Now, there's also going to be more trucks. There's also going to be more uh, insurance, right? Certain costs that are fixed may increase, right? You have, uh, say, a dumpster outside your building. Well, now, do you need a bigger dumpster because you got four crews running, right? Truck payments, all of those things that go. You're, you're now in a shop. You have to have a truck. Uh, your trucks are now in a shop. If you're a million dollar company, you're not running out of a storage unit. You're not running out of anything else. There's so much that has to get done, bringing it all together in house. Now you have to have an office. You have to have the storage. You have to have that. There's prices to that. There's heat, electric, insurance. There, there, all that stuff comes with it. So seeing how this growth happens and scheduling it to the best of your knowledge helps you grow. Is it sustainable? Right? If you get to a million dollars in your area, right now it may seem impossible to do 2,600 jobs a year. But where do you go from there? Is that doable? Is that only window cleaning? If it's not sustainable in window cleaning or the path is going to be uh, longer and you need to get to that million in your five-year plan or whatever your plan is, well, then what other services are you adding? Now I add pressure washing on. I add roof cleaning. I have a division for that. Now I do janitorial at night. A division for that. More employees. But you're doing more jobs. And now that brings down the the, the um, pressure for the window cleaning guys. Don't have to do 10 jobs a day every single day. Now they could do five. But does five now instead of four crews, does that mean that now you're down to two crews, right? So there's all this stuff that has to kind of plan it out. Now, a big thing when you're talking about a GPS to get somewhere, if I was to drive from here, East Coast, all the way over to California and see the Golden Gate Bridge, I would undoubtedly hit detours multiple times. I would hit traffic, things that slow you down. I would hit detours, right? So a path I thought I was going to take turned out to be not the right path, right? There's accidents, things out of my control that deviate my business. All of that is okay, and we do not think about that as we leave on the trip, right? We may try to plan timing, but it all comes down to where you are exactly when you get there. So don't think that you have to have this plan and by the way, if you're a small company, getting to a million dollars in five years is next to impossible. Understand that. There's very few that have done that in so much time. This may be more of a 10-year plan. But in those 10 years, what does it look like? Who is to plan coronavirus? Shutdowns, world economy issues, right? Who is to plan that? Who's to plan this gas increases, right? Who is to plan that? Let's go, Brandon. Uh, but no, with all that being said, there's always going to be things that deviate you from exactly where you want to go. And that's cool. And that will change because you're going to be redoing these projections and goals every single year, every single six months, every single quarter. You may redo that. Hey, let's go back and look. Okay, I needed to make this amount per day. What did I do? I just didn't. That increases. Now I got to make more. If I'm going to hit this goal, I need to make more. How do I make that happen? Active growth mode can make that happen. You go out and get that. If I am going to go hunting, I could sit right here in my room and theoretically, potentially, maybe, kind of, maybe see a deer walk past the window. Like, probably never. But it could happen, right? I'm letting them come to me, right? If I go into the woods and just sit there, I didn't do any research and I just sit there, Potentially, I may see a deer, right? But what if I did the research? I found out where the trails were, right? Maybe I had a bait station. Maybe I saw a ton of sign or I got trail cams. I got everything else. I know this is the best place for them. I know they're going to be here when they're going to be here. And I sit there. I have a higher chance to get a deer than if I didn't. Targeting that growth is active, right? And it has to be sustainable. How does it become sustainable for you? Right? What does that look like in services you offer? A million dollars doing just window cleaning? Pretty hard. Pretty hard. You're going to have to add some services, but then you don't want to be a jack of all trades and a master of none. 
right? So how far are you going to kind of, you know, swerve from where you're at? There's just a lot that kind of goes into that, right? And the big thing that people don't really do is what does your company look like? What does it actually look like, right? A big thing is, is that with companies in general, they don't really see what it looks like, right? My million dollar company has two support staffs and dedicated offices. One is just a phone girl, 100% of the time on the phones, making active calls and passive calls. It's a phone room. The other one is answering calls also, but then doing the office work, right? Are they getting bonused? How much are they getting bonused? Do I have a salesman out in the field getting me new route work? What does that look like? Do they have their own office, right? What is my job? look like? What does the size of my building look like? How many trucks do I need to sustain that amount of money? Right? What does my equipment look like? Do all trucks have the exact same equipment? Do all trucks have uh, a pressure washer? Do I have backup pressure washers? Do I have a small engine mechanic on call? Right? Understanding what the company looks like and this is not like something you just put together in an hour on a Tuesday afternoon. This is like huge projection stuff. But what does that company look like? If you pull all of that and you put it all on paper and go, this is what it looks like, you can see errors. I got four crews making a million dollars and I got three trucks, you know, I got blah, blah, blah. Well, you can't have four crews and three trucks. Look at it, right? Seeing what it looks like, you can then rebuild around that, right? You can then build a company or a growth plan around that. Growing a window cleaning company is not just about how you get the growth. It's about how you grow inside. And just like seeing the Golden Gate Bridge as my ending, maybe I look at pictures and go, ah. So if I go actually pull on this side, there's a parking lot right before the Golden Gate Bridge. I can park there and then I can walk it just to go, go walk on it. Well, I know that now. Now I know where my destination is. It's not the Golden Gate Bridge. It's the parking lot before the Golden Gate Bridge. I'm going to walk the Golden Gate Bridge. It's super long. I can't wear fancy shoes. I got to have something. So now I know what the ending looks like. I can then plan around that. Same thing with growth. Same thing with growth. But we're going into a new year and new growth is huge for just an overall plan. Now, even if you're not talking about actual growth as far as numbers, maybe you're never going to want to hit that million. Maybe you never want to even break 120,000. But growing means being stronger. How do you strengthen that company? I want to have $100,000, but I only want to work two hours a week. Okay, how does that look? How do you make that happen? Plan it. Plan it and lay it out there. It's the only way to do that. Either way, by the way, when you're watching this, uh, I'm out of town, but happy holidays to you. Uh, I know that season is here and it's a weird time of year, but we're planning new year is coming up um, and a lot of planning comes into that. And if in your planning you need new equipment, give me a call. Shameless plug. My name is Jersey with windowcleaner.com. I want to be your sales rep. I want nothing more. My number is 862 312 two zero two six and do yourself a favor get yourself a treat <laughs> so corny american window cleaner magazine it is absolutely amazing uh it is the greatest magazine made for window cleaners in the u.s because it's the only one but it is the longest one it's been going on since 1986 if you haven't heard of it then you're hearing about it now Go get a subscription. It's awcmag.com. It helps me out. It helps you out. And it helps you be awesome. So go and do that. Uh, more importantly, until next week. <laughs> just this kind of episode. Now my, my camera's... Hey, until next week, go out there and be epic. <laughs>